hate stems from something that happened to them in their past. So we gotta love everybody. My challenge to y'all is to refuse to be enemy. Is that Brad What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Underwater Fly Zone podcast. For the first time. For the first time. First time, time recording This is it. definitely not the third retake. Fourth. Fourth retake. <laughs> you want to explain what just happened? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the first time, Foster is recording in 4K for his vlog, which is sick, but it only records for five minutes at a time. So we're about five minutes into a really good podcast. Had to restart. That's fine. Then we're about 42 and a half seconds into the second <laughs> one. And Foster starts thinking about the wrong thing, not what he's telling a story about. Stops. He goes, all right. This is the last time. Starts the third, says, help. stops it immediately. And then now this is the fourth one. And now you're here. And hopefully this is the last time I have to do this recap. Yes, hopefully. And we're here today with who? Introduce uh, yourself. My name is Spencer Harris. Um, <laughs> yes, one sir. of uh, Foster's oldest friends. Excited to be on the podcast. Yes, I sir. Don't, we don't even really know what we're going to talk about. We're just going to kind of talk and we're, see where it goes. We're definitely just going to wing it. And it's going to be great. And that's exactly what I wanted with this. Because me and you, we could talk all day, all right. night. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like he said, he's been my friend, one of the oldest longest time ever i don't even know when we met i don't even know how we met we already talked about that and then it right so yeah so we started talking about it but it it is weird so we i moved to a house when i was like four yeah our neighbors knew like one family who knew one family who then knew everyone in raintree and then (laughs) so i don't know when i met most of my friends from this neighborhood because it's like we kind of all met him at the same time yeah i was like seven probably Mm -hmm. and then there was like a seven or eight year span where i played basketball with either you or carson every year because you're a year ahead year year below so you always did a two-year age gap so exactly i'm two years ahead of carson spencer's right in the middle you got a hug and sandwich over here what can i say yes sir and we uh we had a lot of basketball together shout out the bananas Bananas. and the freds the freds oh we don't need to (laughs) shout them out the fred the bananas were good at basketball (laughs) the bananas were fire yeah and the banana spirit lives on today. You know, I got the yellow. I got yellow. a little bit. I got a Shocker Nation, baby. Yes, sir. Hey, Wichita shout State. out New Vintage Thrifts. This is a fire, is fire sick. shirt. Make sure to go tap in with the episode. It just came out. By <laughs> yeah. the way, okay, I got to recap it again. Yeah, you do. It's been a busy two weeks for me, y'all. And it shouldn't be because I got that surgery and they told me take two weeks off. But what taking two weeks off looks like for me is a little different. Okay, so about a weekend, I realized I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm going to go back to work. So 5 a.m. to two shifts. I've talk, talked about it before at Walmart. I wake up on Wednesday, 4 a.m., get to work by five, leave it to, we record episode five with Caitlin Macy Carson. Literally my favorite episode of the Underwater, Underwater Fly Zone. Try to top it today if you I will can. see. Yeah, we'll I haven't see if watched we it yet, it. so I don't know what my goal is. I don't yeah. know my bar, but I'll do it's my best. It's pretty freaking high, bro. They <laughs> killed it. They absolutely killed it. But So we record the episode Like I said, I've been up since 4, and I stayed up till 1 a.m. editing. Wake up at 4, so three hours of sleep on Thursday, go to work 5 to 2, get off, drive an hour to Liberty, record this episode with New Vintage Thrifts. Again, shout out to them. I copped this shirt there, too. Got home really late. I think I went to bed around midnight that night, which whatever. Woke up again at 4, edited that episode all night till 1 a.m. again. (laughs) Woke up at four on today, went to work until two. It was my last day at Walmart. Love you guys at R- Walmart if R- you're R- watching. R.I.P. Walmart. R.I.P. It was so <laughs> lit. Loved it, but I'm done there now. It was my last day. Leave work. Go record the intro to the vlog that screwed over the <laughs> first recording of this podcast because I left it in 4K, and then here we are. So yeah. we're running on, I don't even know what, but... I'm awake and we're recording, baby. And it's going to be Dude, late. I got like eight hours of sleep and I'm exhausted. Um, <laughs> so I think we're kind of on the same level. I've gotten at least eight hours the last few nights. So we're kind of yeah, pretty matching even, par there. For yeah. sure, for sure. I don't even know the last time I got eight hours. I, I don't even know if I physically can. I was going to ask, like if in an ideal world where you don't have a podcast edit, which probably won't ever happen, <laughs> yeah. what time would you go to sleep to wake up at four? To wake up, oh, probably Ooh. like 11. 12 that's terrible yeah i mean i'll lay in bed at nine and then i have a bad habit of watching youtube shorts until who knows when right until way too late yeah that's my worst habit bro like and i need to break it but like at the same time me watching that stuff is a little bit different because i'm watching it to see okay this one has a bunch of views 
Yeah, but then again, that's also kind of an excuse. Why am I watching for two hours when I need to go to bed? Right. It's it's for the business. For sure. (laughs) It's your TikTok. YouTube shorts. That's interesting. Is everything just reposted TikToks on there? Basically. Uh, That's what I've heard. Yeah. I don't don't watch them. Yeah. Or uh, reposted Instagram reels and stuff. Yeah. Um, I watch way too much TikTok, so. Well, it's funny because on YouTube shorts, it only goes for 60 seconds. So Uh if it's like a 90 second reel, I even do this. I'll just throw it on there and it'll just cut out. (laughs) <laughs> just, it'll just stop that's it There's, but it'll blow up still you're like ready you're like oh my god this story's okay i guess i'm on the next. and then you Literally. forget about it you scroll yeah. to, you scroll too and you forget exactly that's why they're good exactly that's how they get youtube you. shorts go hard though if you're a youtuber out there and you listen um they get, they bring in the subs they don't bring in the views but they bring in the subs and... oh i always thought it's opposite where you get a bunch of views from it but no one like stays but it keeps getting people there it's but I haven't really looked into it. So what you're saying yeah. is more right than what I Well, am. like, like, okay, so they'll bring in the views on the short, uh-huh. but, like, they're not coming over and watching oh, your videos. Okay. I get what you mean. Yeah, but it's all good. Like, and also, that being said, please subscribe, y'all. Like, I'm on the journey to 1K because there's just something psych- psychological about when you see a channel with 1K, you're like, okay, that's legit. Yeah. I can buy into this. When it's not all digits. When you got letters yeah. and the subscribers, it for changes. Sh- it, for sure. I don't know why, but it's just a thing, you I know? should subscribe to this thing. I'm kidding. I am. This I'm, dude. I'm, this dude. Dude, I was I was probably subscribed like 24. For sure. 15, for sure. Like okay, I actually want to uh, get into this and ask you a question I have been wanting to ask. Um, you said like at the beginning of the summer, whenever the merch shop was going crazy, we did the live show, all this stuff. You were like, I wish I had been more involved in this. So, do you think you haven't been involved in this? Because I'm interested. I well, I've been like I've like listened and I've like yeah. been friends with you, but I haven't done stuff to help. Like Connor helped with the drop. Carson will go out and take pictures. Like. I haven't been in any merch, any of the merch drop pictures. I bought all but one of the merches, which I need to get today. I yeah. need to pick up the one I didn't get. But yeah, <laughs> I, like I've I've bought the stuff and I've supported as like someone who watches. Uh-huh. But I feel like we have a friendship that goes beyond the support that I yeah. have given to you. Like I I wish I had ha- like literally helped somewhere else more. Like yeah, helped with the drop, helped with social media, helped with even be a model or something. Although. You choose much better looking models than me. So you're, no, you're doing no, decent no. at it. You, you, you sexy, bro. Don't even count. Thank but, you. <laughs> but no, bro, that that's interesting to me, though, because I have friends that I've called brother that have yet to acknowledge that the underwater fly zone exists. Yeah. Like, so I'm just saying, like, I never thought that, bro. I was yeah. always like, I know Spencer's got me. Like, you copped the first merch drop. Right. You, I always knew you'd been listening and stuff. Yeah. I also know you've been really busy at school, too. Right. So, but, yeah, I mean... It just, it feels like it's at a point where like right now it is a su- successful thing. You talked about it at your live thing. You were like, yeah. I got to the point where I could have quit and I got past there. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you were able to get to a point and get past it and continue growing is like, it's a thing now. And I am just someone that gets to watch you do your thing. Yeah. And it's awesome to see, but I like... If I join now, it's I'm a dude hopping on a bandwagon. I'm like, I'm like, oh, dude, you want to help social media? That thing you're already doing great and amazing? Because I can help with that. It's like, no, I'm just someone who wants the clout of helping a thing that's good. If I'd helped when you got 18 viewers a pod uh, episode or whatever, yeah, it'd be different than whenever you're getting however many you are now. Hey, well, I appreciate you regardless, bro. I did want to say that at some point on here. Might as well start it off right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, you've been, you've <clears throat> definitely been supporting. I definitely appreciate it. Um, but. Anyways, talking about the live event, I do want to also, I mean, okay, before I even talk about that, just so y'all know, we will talk all day and all night. That's part of the reason I didn't even really plan anything out for this. I kind of just want to see where it goes because... I spent eight minutes. Dude, I, I just looked down and I'm like, <laughs> dude, I haven't even did the announcement yet. Right. I thought it'd been half a second. Li- dude, Do your crazy. announcement. Sorry. Okay, okay, that. okay. So anyways... God was working yesterday. Today is what? What is it? Saturday? Something so like last that. night, bro, as I'm editing this episode, like I told y'all about, God was working, bro. It all worked out really weird. So basically, my boy Kellen Overstreet, he has been on the podcast two times. He was the Wyoming running back back in 2016 or whatever. He was Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills quarterback. He was his college running back. Pretty sick stuff. I knew the guy because he went to Northwest with me. I hit him up though, and I was just like, bro, I feel like both times I got you on, it wasn't great because of me. I was like, I want to get you on again, and I want to talk about blah, 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 blah. Not going to tell y'all what we're talking about. Basically, he was like, okay, bro, I'll hit you up later on in the summer. This was in like May. I hit up my guy, El Dorado, and I was like, bro, do you have any openings? Just unrelated, unrelated. He's like, do I have any openings on a Friday night? And he's like, bro, any Friday night you want in July, you can have because they're all open. I was like, all right, bet. And then. Kellen happens to hit me up yesterday saying, bro, the only time I can record is Friday night. And I was like, 
I called him right away. I'm like, hey, bro, <laughs> would you be down to do something crazy with me? And he was like, what is it, bro? And, he, and I was like, I want to do a live event, our podcast live at El Dorado, a live podcast episode at El Dorado. And he was like, bro, let me let me check in with the wife. And, and uh, he's a whole dad, bro. Right, he got a yeah, kid, yeah, so, yeah, like right, a newborn right. kid. So uh, he checked in, made sure it all worked. So I'm waiting on his call right when I hear that the merch will be coming in next week. And I already know these stickers I bought. I just dropped some money on 3,000 stickers. So I'm trying to get those in before the show. It all kind of happened at once. It was confirmed that El Dorado was open. Kellen committed. The stickers, I already knew they were coming in, so that doesn't count. But then the tees are going to be in for sure by next Friday. And it all just came together. And I was like, bro, this is another one of those signs. Right. And because it's one of those signs, I feel like, feel like that's going to be a special night and I hope everybody watching is going to be there I don't know Ooh, just I get kind of chills thinking about how crazy it is that everything all these different directions all just came together and it's like Friday night July 21st seven o'clock what's gonna happen Ooh, I'm so excited man I saw you post about that one came out of nowhere like I know like the other one it's like I like I knew you're kind of interested like you've done stuff it felt I was like out of left field but I it was dope I looked at my calendar I was like off work early enough, I'll be there. Let's I gotta, get it. I'll get. I'll find my hat wherever that went. I was gonna wear it today. <laughs> lost. I <laughs> thrown in the laundry. Gone. So it's got to be somewhere. Somewhere for sure. But I gotta find that. Throw that on after work, and I'll be there. I do. I. I think it'll be do- the live podcast part. I think will be cool too. It'll be interesting for sure. I gotta yeah. figure out how the technicality is gonna work because I'm like 1080p on the camera. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or a really short podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, five minutes. <laughs> Thanks for coming, y'all. Thank you guys. We do the intro and then end it. Yeah, no content. I hope your four and a half uh, minutes of margarita <laughs> was worth it. Literally. But yeah, bro, I got to figure out how the mics and stuff is going to project on speakers and right. record. I don't yeah. know how that's going to work. We're going to figure it out yeah. regardless. If you, Even if I have to hold a mic and have this mic. Right, if you have two. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I hope y'all pull up. We're dropping this on Wednesday, so you got two days to plan if you've just now heard about this. But there's no way if you follow the Instagram. I'm going to be spamming, bro. Yeah. I have been spamming. I was just saying, I've been blitzing I didn't Instagram. Wanna, I don't want to call you up, but you kind of <laughs> already, and it, it happened 12 hours ago. Bro, I've been calling blitz plays on Instagram right. the whole summer. Like, yeah. just post, 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 like. I don't know, dude. That's the grind. That's yeah. the grind I'm on right now. Yeah. That I, I one thing, I, your social media, like, so like that's what I want to work in. So that's yeah. what like I've watched the way you've done it. It's been really cool because I feel like you don't, you haven't. I don't. This is, I don't want to come off wrong. You don't do ways like the right way. You do it your way, and it's yeah. what works. And I think it's what makes it you so authentic. Is like your podcast, your vlogs, your social. Everything is like so you. It's like I appreciate that. your thing is like I want people to know, and I'm gonna tell them. So it's like yeah. you do that by posting 18 times in a 15 minute span <laughs> on your Instagram story. It just happens. It might annoy some people, but it's who you are. And if, yeah, and the people sure. it annoys don't need to see it, and the people who like it, they're gonna stick with it. Cause it's who Thanks. you are. If you try to be, if you try to be something else or someone else, I feel like it would show, and I feel like it represents underwater flies in a lot too. I it's you that. and the and like. The brand. I almost said the podcast, but it's more than a podcast at this point. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, it's just a thing. Thank you. It's just bro. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that. It is crazy, especially on my Snapchat. I feel so annoying. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I feel I, like you post more on your Instagram. Definitely, but but then, it is, like it's branded. Yeah, yeah. But like my personal Snapchat, I feel so bad because I'm just like I have to post it or else no one's gonna know about it. Right. But this is gonna annoy everybody. Like yeah. it's just people going through. Oh my goodness, it's another podcast drop, and he's calling it the best one ever again. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know I, yeah, we were talking about this a little bit before. We tried not to talk too much podcast stuff before, but like, yeah. If it's you're not lying because if a podcast isn't better than the one if what you're doing isn't better than the thing before whether it's podcasting life any anything, anything. that and then you're not doing it right yeah. I mean not everything will be but if if that's not your goal exactly so you're just hitting your goals you're just doing what you what everyone should want to do I mean I'm not life. sitting here lying I'm not coming yeah. on there saying oh there's the I'm not saying it to like for you guys to click it I'm saying yeah. it because I genuinely believe that you know episode five when I posted that saying this is the best episode ever. I was serious. Like, yeah. This like, is my favorite like, one. You like every episode. You don't make a bad episode, but you're not just going to throw it that it's your favorite or the best or whatever. Yeah. Unless you genuinely think it, even mm-hmm. if it isn't for anyone else, if you believed it and you think that's true, that'll be what you said. Exactly. It is what it is, dude. I I mean, 
people judge. People probably get annoyed. And I, I know because you know how you can tell when people unadd you on Snap? No, you can? Well, like you'll be sending a Snap and then some random name pops up. Oh, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Bro, every day, like, there's tons of people on that in me. And I'm just like, sorry, bro. Like, I can't change, bro. Because if I change, I won't be doing me. And if I'm not doing me, then this is all just right. fake and not worth it. I mean, you know I think it kind of goes what I was saying. It's like, if people don't see it, that's fine for them. Unadd you, unfollow you, whatever. And I'm okay with that, yeah. for sure. Because they weren't people that you wanted to stick around anyway. Yeah. It's like, you do you. It's it's not a slide on them, but, like, you're going to be who you are. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that that's one thing that you've had since I've known you. And especially like high school and later as you've grown as like a person, but you've always, you've never been like afraid to be you. I've, I've always struggled with that, especially once I got to, like when I was a kid, I was like, I was athletic. I was smart. Yeah. I was, I was a, I was a stud in like third grade. It doesn't matter looking, but in the moment I'm like, I'm the fastest kid on the playground. Yeah. And I have the highest, whatever the reading thing, I don't even remember what it was called. You have a four. Like it wasn't yeah, one, two, yeah, three, yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a four. I got advanced on the map test. Like you step up to me. And so <laughs> I, I'm, I was okay being that kid. Yeah. But then once I got to high school and I, I didn't want to be the, I didn't want to be me, the kid that was depressed and anxious and was failing Spanish and couldn't make varsity <laughs> uh, tennis or soccer. Like, and then I became like, I would put a mask. I'd be who people want me to be. Yeah. And it's like, but you like, regardless of if you are reaching or not reaching, like foster is going to be foster. I feel like Spencer's been whoever, like the people in the room want me to be. And that's one thing the last like few years, I got deep really quick. That happened out of nowhere. Yeah, I like this though. Um, Keep it going. But it's like, it's like I wanted to be who people wanted me to be because if not, it's like I wasn't comfortable with who I was because who I was wasn't perfect. And it's like, if I'm not perfect, what's what, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. The spiral for therapists to try to figure it out. They've sort of done it, but like <laughs> it's just gone all over the place. And like I've always, appreciated that about you even if i didn't realize that i did like i feel yeah. like it took me a little bit to realize that that was one of the things about you like to consciously i knew it but i didn't uh-huh. put it to words that it's like foster is foster regardless of who he's with what he's doing whatever like you you would rather stick out in a crowd for being you than blend in for not yeah i appreciate that i do like well i feel like people think it like it's my comfort zone being me it's really not it's my it's very uncomfortable sometimes, like especially when I had dreads as president of a fraternity. Like I'll bring that example up because it's the first that comes to my head. But like walking into a meeting, everyone, you know how fraternity presidents are, right. the typical like dressed up, you know. Mm-hmm. I walk in in this <laughs> dreads, walk in there. I ain't talking all professional. I'm talking exactly how I'm talking right now. Right. Because I talk how I talk right now every day. Yeah. In my job interview, talk just like this. Did just, I just do exact? I mean, I'll dress up for a job interview or something like that. Right. Or like if it was a formal you'll meeting, have, you'll I have, have something respect. with a collar. Yeah, right. I have respect. Like I will dress up in those occasions, but I'm just like, bro, I'm just gonna keep doing me. And guess what? Look where that led. Like that's when I realized because in high school I didn't really do much, but like when I got to college, I just started completely doing me. Yeah, it was not comfortable always, but I won best fraternity president, homecoming was even president of fraternity. This is all stuff when I went to Maryville, I was like, there is 0% shit. If they told me I would be in a fraternity, I would say no way, let alone president, let alone whatever else happened. Like, I was just like, okay, that's when I really learned, like, whenever they say be yourself, really take that to heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't know. So it's not, it's not necessarily me being comfortable. It's me being like, all right, this is an uncomfortable situation, but get over it. Cause what are you going to do? not be yourself like and live a lie like i just just that couldn't be me after a certain point and it was at one point i mean in high school i was a little just it's not that i wasn't being myself i just was afraid to show myself so i just didn't say anything right so i don't know and i think i saw you in more comfortable situations more often so i saw who you were enough it's like i didn't see you as the kid walking through the hall listening to XXS then Tassion with your hood up. It's like I saw you in the car with your hood down listening to the same music. So <laughs> yeah, so I saw I saw you I saw you laughing while listening to it. So I that's probably part of it. But like it took me so long to one realize that I was like doing the mask. Now I've realized it. Now I kinda have to like learn who I am. Cause okay. I've spent I've spent so many years trying to be like who people need me to be. I don't really know who I am. And like that's that's big. I'm graduating December and I'm like, I don't know who I am as a human. It's okay. like and now I'm about to, I'm about to be an adult. So I think that's been the weird part for me is it wasn't like, oh, I'm not being myself. All right, I'll be myself now. I wish it was that easy, but it's like my brain just won't connect those dots. Well, it's hard to be yourself if you don't know yourself. Correct. You know right, what I'm right. Like I can't be like be yourself because who is myself? And so that's kind of been True. my struggle right now is like 
I don't really know. I mean, I know parts of it. Like, I don't know nothing about myself, but yeah. it's like, just, just, oh, let down the barrier. But it's like, what part of me is a barrier? What part is just me? It's I like, feel that. Okay. I don't want to knock down a load bearing wall. It kind of, kind yeah. of a thing. It's like, was this a mask or is this a, an integral part? Is this a core memory like of who I am? And I don't know. It's been weird. I still know the answer. I'm at a very middle point of this journey. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I don't have the answer to the question, but I like that though. Like, that's cool. Maybe we'll get to kind of follow along, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? You have me back. Yeah. If, come yeah. on, bro, it's 20 minutes in and we haven't even talked about anything yet. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Hey, you're, Amazing, in, a, you're in a barrier I broke down. Putting these pasty white thighs open on the okay, so I didn't think about how short these shorts were when I got here. I I was sitting here the whole time pulling here, forgot about them, dude. I got pasty white thighs because I forgot to tan them, and that is who I am, bro. Hey. <laughs> Finally, I get to use that button. Is that That's the first time on on an episode? First time, sick, right here, baby. Glad I could be the butt of your joke. Dang, <laughs> now I feel horrible. No, it's fine. All right, restart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go take five. Okay, okay. So we've talked a lot about me, but this episode's about you because I want you on here and I want them to get to know you. So I want to take it back to Spencer Harris, zero to five, those ages. Because this is the thing about the ages from zero to five. This is something I learned literally like a while back. My boy, Randy Sude, shout out to you, bro. He was talking to me about how those years, zero to five, six, those early years, the way you are loved and treated in those years has a huge effect on the next 10, 20, maybe even 30 years of your life. So to get to know you, I just want to start back. Do you have like a story from the young years or do you have like a, just like something you want to say about that? You know, just- do you remember, do you know your first memory? Like, can you think what your first memory is? Cause I can't, and it's totally random. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. I was popping out of a, <laughs> <laughs> that's so wrong, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Two an episode. But no, okay. First memory, um, bro, no. So mine, it was I think my third birthday party, third or fourth. Like I was mm, young. Okay. I know it was one of those because it was at my old house, and I assume I wasn't two. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I went with my friends to see the Curious George movie. I okay. Suppose, I don't remember anything about the movie, but I remember that's what it was. And we had like family in town. Yeah. And we came back, and I came in first. I go, "Is anybody home?" And my uncle goes, "Nope, no one's here. We all left." And I was like, believed it for a second. Mm -hmm. All I remember. That's it. Okay, but that's just that, my first memory. Like, it doesn't mean anything, but it's just yeah, random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the first memory I have. That's crazy. I cannot remember my first memory yeah. at all. That's I mean, that's I, I might remember an older one, but, like, that's that's the one I think of as my first memory. So if one was sooner or older, I don't remember it. But you were talking about, like, how you were loved and how you were raised. Yeah. That's part of kind of my mental health journey is okay. that I was so incredibly loved. Like, yeah. my parents are amazing parents. Yeah, I'm going to say right now, shout out to the Harris parents. They are Dude, I don't even the best. Like, uh, first of all, best basketball coach ever. Second of all, your mom is like the biggest supporter. Like, she's up there in the top one percent of yeah. underwater flies on supporters. So shout out to Carrie, shout out to Harry. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. I know they're watching, obviously. Yeah. Love you guys. No, Anyways. like like they're they're amazing. Yeah. Um, but part of it, like I was talking about it when I was a kid, like not even zero to five, like pat even just past that. Yeah. It's like I was really good and I hit expectations. Like I was, I had these high expectations on me, but I hit them. Like I got good scores. I did good in sports, all this stuff, yada, yada. Yeah. But then I think part of it was I like set an expectation of myself too soon that my parents never like held on me when I didn't deserve it. Like in high school, when it became that I wasn't automatically eating a hundred percent, my parents were like, GPA doesn't define you. Like who are you as a person? And like, they were so loving about that. Yeah. But because I reached expectations and they loved me like how good parents are supposed to, where <laughs> yeah. they're like, oh, you're doing good? Good job. Here's here's a cookie for doing good. And then it's like, oh my God, I didn't do perfect, amazing. Uh -huh. I didn't get a cookie because I don't deserve one. Yeah. And then it's like, I think that's been part of it is it's like my parents did nothing wrong. I, on paper, I have everything you want. Like I got a fiance. I've got a six-year relationship. I got loving parents. I got a great house. Like going to good school i'm leaving with almost no loans i got great friends yeah so it almost makes me it, it's it's like no feelings are invalid but it's like why do i feel sad and it's, yeah so it's been funny okay, i've balance. felt that same thing honestly right yeah. and it's like it's not because my parents my parents did everything right every like no one did anything wrong but i think part of it stems from being such an amazing flipping kid i, I couldn't be stopped in the second grade yeah i never lost a game of tag um <laughs> but here i am like as a human where not everything is perfect and you don't win every time. And it's uh -huh. kind of learning how to balance that because I didn't as a kid, like I didn't have to study until 
maybe junior year like math one time and then college and even now it's like communications i don't do math in college like i don't Uh study that often and so it's like things that other people learn as a kid i've had to learn later because i was naturally gifted as a Mm seven-year-old for sure here i am 21 not gifted (laughs) all all a lie well you do have the gift of talking 25 minutes of gold so that's a gift i mean i did so i was talking to my fiance mckenna shout out mckenna put yeah, a ring, for put, sure put a ring on that thing um <laughs> uh <laughs> about like what my thing is because i feel like everyone has a thing and she thought i was going on my every once in a while i just get really sad and i beat myself up like yeah I, like i'm really self-detrimental like i will really talk down on myself think down on myself i'm trying to get better at it I was like, what is my thing? Like, everyone's got a thing they're good at. What is my thing? And she's like, Spencer, that's so, like, what do you mean? I was like, no, like, sorry, genuine question. Yeah. And she was like, people. Like, you know how to interact with people, whether it's talking or listening or whatever. 100%. And it is really, the last, like, week, I have changed so much about what I want to do as a career. Because I thought I was last going. Last week? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's a new week for me, you know. Yeah. Some existential crisis. This week was work. Um, <laughs> it's like. I think about like, I was going to go into a field that didn't let me directly work with people that often. Like I was going to do like social media and marketing, like campaign stuff, Mm -hmm. which like you have to know people, but I want to interact with people. Like that is what I'm good at. And that's what I enjoy. Like talking to someone, getting to know them, them getting to know me using that, not even in like a bad way. That's also part of it is it's like, I don't want to get to know someone to use it against them. I don't want to learn that to that you like dogs so i can sell you like dog food i just want to learn that you like dogs Uh um and so i like i want to find a job that help can help me do that better but also it's like i was almost a therapist but i don't i I don't i think i have too much of my own baggage okay to do that i was yeah i was almost a therapist i know i kind of knew that i i did it i so psychology for a few months of college but then i was like I feel like can't handle my own stuff right now. And it's like, I have a lot of baggage. Even if I get that fixed, it's like, am I mentally intelligent enough not to take home and emotionally intelligent to take that stuff home? So it's like, maybe not that deep interacting with people, just uh-huh. like surface level, get to know them. But like, yeah, I take a lot of pride in like knowing my friends. It's like, if you need a birthday gift for someone and you text me and it's one of my friends, I should know something that would be, that they would like and enjoy. Yeah. Cheap, expensive, whatever. Like I could get them, I could know what their favorite like basketball team is you could, or player and you could get a jersey for him or whatever it's uh-huh. like i pride myself on being the friend that can do that and so finding something with work that could do that this last week has been like i've just been turning trying to find something like literally. i've lost i've literally lost sleep trying to think of jobs so you went down to like seven hours <laughs> <laughs> probably no probably like four or five like oh, okay. i normally we... try to get seven or eight because i don't do enough not to it's like yeah. i got melatonin if i can't fall asleep take a melatonin but i was sitting there i was like i don't want to take melatonin i'm thinking like what are, mm-hmm. how do i want to work and then all of a sudden it was 1 a.m well just remember bro we are young and god willing we have a lot of years ahead of us so mm-hmm. you don't gotta rush bro that's one thing i've been in my own head about i'm like dude i gotta get things going i'm 23 blah, 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 blah. and my dad's like bro I would give anything to go back to when you're right. that young. You have so much time ahead of you. This lady at work, literally, shout out Tammy. <laughs> she, like, 60-year-old lady. She was like, she, I was telling her how my last day was coming up. She's like, well, you better enjoy this time because soon it will all be behind you. And I'm just like, that's so true. Like and that you don't office, know how much time is ahead of you. Like it's like the office quote. It's like, you wish you could know you're in the good old times when you're in the good old times. For sure. And it's like, because, yeah, I don't want to look back and be like, I spent my fun years, like, worrying about the future exactly but i look at it as like i was 18 and i was like i don't know what i want to do when i graduate what am i going to do and here i'm three years later i still don't really know but i had a good time and it's like Mm -hmm. i am young i would like to know i would like to get a job but it's like i'm young enough i can change it so i just want to find something that works but i just when i get down like in a spiral i i'm i don't know if it's the tub or something my momentum just keeps taking me Uh and it's like logical thinking of like hey you're young doesn't work i'm like but i'm not that young yeah. I'm 21. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you got 40 years. Like, yeah, you can you can take some time. Sure. But I don't know. It's just I spiral very easily. Well, it's hard to know what you want to do just by thinking about it. I think you've got to go try it, bro. You just got to try a bunch of different things. And yeah. don't be afraid to fail, dude. So many people are so afraid to like, bro, the, y'all probably watching, you could probably do a podcast better than me. But <laughs> a, a big thing people do is like they fear, oh, I don't want to put myself out there and fail in front of everybody. I'm just like, bro, maybe this is my thing. And I've actually fallen in love with doing this. So, and I never would have known that. Also shout out to you. You're the one of people that inspired me to start doing podcasts. 
I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Well, shout out to this guy. That was one of my things that I was like learning is learning to fail. Like part of yeah. the expectation things, it was like, if I don't do a hundred percent, it's not even like if I have this goal and there's like 20% markers all the way up. Typically, if you do 80% of something in most cases, that's pretty good. But for me, I just didn't reach the top goal. And mm-hmm. so like not doing everything was a failure and failure wasn't good. It's like, but that's where you learn stuff. I've exactly. started and not finished three podcasts and like i had a good time <laughs> doing all of them yeah but for different reasons like the first one i was doing with uh andrew patterson it was great then i moved three hours away back to school and it's like it didn't work not in person mm-hmm. that's fine i started another one where i just talked to people it was fun but i, was, I love i was like one. running out of ideas and people to talk to and it's yeah. like that's fine and then in a basketball one and then i went to school and i go i'll just talk to people about basketball i don't need to record it it's like yeah it wasn't worth it that's but valid. but like I tried it and it like, it was cool. I learned I didn't want to continue doing that one. The other two were like, they were fun. I stopped for other reasons, but that one I was like, eh. Hey, don't worry about it, bro. I got you. Yeah. I got, we'll talk, you know, you <laughs> right, know right, we'll keep right. that behind the scenes. But yeah. anyways, okay. So I got some other questions I want to ask you. So obviously I know you per, like really good friends our whole lives, but the people watching probably don't know you as well. And I really want them to get to know you. So if you're open to it, uh, I was just thinking like, what is some of the biggest things you've struggled with throughout your life? Like, what are some of your biggest struggles uh, that you've dealt with and that you've had to work through and maybe you're still even working through right now? Um, so yeah, I kind of talked about it, about therapists trying to like work on me. I've gone to yeah. four therapists in my life okay. starting. So I went to one sophomore year and I won't name any of them, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went to one sophomore year and he just wasn't very good. It's like, he had, he clearly had like clients every 45 minutes and he'd bring you in. He'd talk to you, he'd write some notes that he'd never look at again, send you home. And it's like, he'd talk about stuff that didn't really apply to me. And it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't working. Yeah. It, it's his style. Like third meeting, he was like, oh, here's this form. He was supposed to fill out about like symptoms your first time. Filled it out. I don't think he ever looked at it. And it's like, uh, this isn't worth it. Yeah. So I left. I was sophomore, junior year of high school. Then my freshman year, I went to our school's one. They have like a $10 session one, which is super cheap. Yeah. I then learned why it was super cheap because I felt <laughs> like I felt like I looked up on Google questions to ask during therapy and then they were just reading that. Really? Yeah. So I was like, I'm done here. I'm going to leave. Yeah. I went to a guy, went a break of my freshman year a few months later because I still needed therapy. Um, and he was good while I was in person um, about like solving issues. I'm like, I'm anxious. He's like, here's a meditation technique. I'm like, sick, love it. But then I went back to school, me and him met online. It felt less personal. And he didn't really, he he knew how to solve my issues when they happened, but that was it. I felt like we weren't going anywhere. Yeah. Then for like five, six months this last year, I went to BetterHelp. Um, there's probably some discount code. You'll be sponsored by them someday. I feel like every mm-hmm. podcast is a BetterHelp. Really? Disc- oh, every other podcast. It's like, oh, BetterHelp.com. Uh, <laughs> do uh, discount code. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, so I went to them. If they pay the bills. Right. <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went to them and it was, it was really good because you could message them whenever and then you would pay for like one a week or one every other week or whatever, like call, video, message, chat, whatever. Yeah. And she was really good because she would find my issue. We would solve it. But then we'd also think of like why they happened. Like I hadn't thought about my childhood since my childhood. And like when I did, it was just like I remember playing like in the yard with my neighbor. I didn't think about like the tr- the trauma part of it because it wasn't actual trauma. Like yeah. what tr- what you think of as trauma is different from like trauma is just like things that affect you negatively now. They weren't mm-hmm. necessarily bad because um, I didn't have any actual trauma. I talked about it. Like I had a great life. Yeah. But she would go to like the good parts of my life and see how they affect me now. Like being gifted, being like super smart and excelling at a young age has negatively affected me because I didn't learn how to lose and how to not be perfect and not be amazing a lot later in my life than most people so at 21 most people have failed and not been good for 19 years or whatever yeah i've done it for like four five like <laughs> uh-huh. like not to be that guy but i was really good at anything i wanted to do till i was like 15 years old and so, so was it was it just trying to cope with like just kind of having your identity switched because you kind of felt like your identity was oh i'm that guy that does really good in school does really good at this and, this. And then it was just kind of like oh now I'm just kind of thrown in as normal, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it was like she made me realize it's like the last 5 years when I haven't when I haven't been perfect, it's been I've just thought I was a failure. Like I'm just bad. She helped me realize I'm just a human. Like that's yeah, that's just yeah, what yeah. She, that's what being a person is is failing sometimes, winning sometimes, celebrating the wins, learning from the failures and like that's just how life goes. Facts. Big, small like wins and losses whatever. It's like 
everything is either learning or the thing you've been striving for. Like, that, like that, that's what stuff is. I mean, it's not all black and white, but like, that's, I just kind of, she helped me realize that like, I'm a human being and it's like failure isn't bad. It's just a part of life. And so for sure, that's for sure. kind of been my journey recently. Now it's before, cause before it's beat myself up. Cause I thought I was a failure. I was a bad person. And I think that was part of the issues. I went into the other therapist. I also didn't give them the right stuff. Like, she helped me realize because I thought it was depression and then I kind of get anxious from it. But then I realized I have a lot, really bad anxiety that stirs, that like turns into depression. Okay. So if I can help that anxiety and learn what happens and stop that, then I won't be sad. Whereas before I thought I was sad and it made me anxious about stuff. So it's like learning that relationship has been very helpful. So you went in there because of depression and then they were like, actually, and then yeah. kind of, okay. I mean, so I knew I had anxiety, but I just, like I got meds for it all last, last year. Yeah. But I thought that just was from being sad and depressed or whatever. Uh-huh. But I realized it was kind of the other way, other way around. So it's like I didn't need to cure the depression and then stop the anxiety for now. It's like I need to stop the anxiety and like that is the issue. It's like that is the root cause. Yeah. That is the foundation of this pyramid uh-huh. that is like hurting me and causing me turmoil and all this stuff. I remember a special moment at the show that I'll never forget was when you came up to me afterwards. And it was just kind of one of those moments of uh, the El Dorado show yeah. June 9th, um, this past summer. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. Um, you came up to me and cause we were together when we would be driving to school together. I would drive you to school my junior year. I've talked about it before. Worst year of my life. Yeah. And I never really knew, but that was a Apparently you told me at the show, like that was a hard time for you. And I just remember how low we were at that point. Yeah. And when we were talking at the show, I just felt like, dude, it just was like, gosh, everything happens for a reason. Like everything's coming full circle and like right. there's good in everything. You just got to really attack. And like, yeah, it was a special moment, bro. You came up to me and you said something like, bro, it's crazy how, what you were talking about. I was going through my own stuff. We just never really talked about it. And mm-hmm. I don't know what, what were you going through in those times? Like, I know you've spoke on it. So like, um, somewhat through this episode, but was there more to it? I mean, I feel like it was a lot of internal stuff. Yeah. Like things were going right in my life. Like at that point, like I, I had a girlfriend, like I, I just uh-huh. started dating a girl and it's like, oh, it's cool. It's like, I was playing yeah. a new sport. It was during my, like I was playing tennis. I liked it and tennis was lit. all this stuff, <laughs> but it's like, there was just a lot of like internal struggle. And I think part of it is I'm, I'm still not good at it, but I like bottle up feelings and emotions, okay. especially when they affect other people. Like. I would rather not get an argument or a disagreement and make someone else's life like 1% worse. Yeah. And my life will be 300% worse for it. It's like, okay. I will bottle stuff in. And so that was just the issue is there wasn't like a big thing wrong with me at that time. There was just a lot and a lot of little things that kept adding up and would valid like, and I think I also, I kind of, it's like feeling sad and feeling that emotion is better than feeling no emotion. It's for like, sure. I wasn't winning. I wasn't doing anything amazing anymore. It's like, I wasn't winning tag at recess or getting a advanced on the map test like when I was a kid. Uh-huh. But I wasn't quite failing. Like I was getting fine grades. I wasn't I was playing sports. I wasn't bad at them. I wasn't terrible. So it's like being sad and feeling angry or whatever. It was like it, I felt. It, and so yeah. there was a time where it's I either felt and I felt bad or I didn't feel and I I mean looking back, I I think I would still do that now. It's like I'd rather just feel good and it's like fix that. Yeah. But I don't like, especially as a kid and even now as an adult, it's like not feeling something is a weird and a scary alone feeling. And I just didn't want to have that anymore. Yeah, for sure. There's a song that says it's about like this dude, like got a divorce and like whatever he said, it's better to feel pain than to never feel at all right. or to feel nothing at all. And I'd completely agree. Cause at least if you're feeling the pain, you're growing from the situation. Cause a lot of people, whenever you're dealing with depression, and this is something I'm probably going to talk about on Friday at the show is People like to distract you. It's like, oh, my friend feels depressed. I want to go take them out to get ice cream. Or, and those things help, but they don't solve the problem. Like yeah. to solve the problem, you've really got to face the pain and got to feel the pain and express the pain. Let the pain out. Because if you're just distracting yourself by going on to get ice cream or playing the Wii, that's something that that's something for me that when I was really going through it, right. I would play Wii sports baseball all the time thinking yeah. it was really helping me. But in reality, it was just getting me by. It right. wasn't attacking and solving the problem it was just getting me by and um and that's okay for a while i mean you know it's good to have those things it's good to go get ice cream with your friends these are good things but only I, doing those yeah people always try to distract you and because no one especially people like no one wants to deal with 
the pain. You know what I'm saying? It sucks. Like, especially right. when it's the first time you've really felt it. No one wants to do it. I speak from personal experience. Nobody wants to do it. Um, but it's something you got to do if you really want to improve. Just take a step forward. Because life goes on, bro, after everything. Like, life always keeps going. I guess that's speaking more from a grief stance. But, yeah, I don't know. Right. That's just what I was thinking about. I mean, even even now, like, looking back, I've had time to see it. And I still can't pinpoint, like, this thing went wrong. Yeah. And I think that was that's also part of it is, like, you clearly had, like, you had a major life event. And it's like, I felt bad. Everybody knew it was wrong. <laughs> right. I felt bad opening up to you and be like, dude, I'm sad. Because if you were like, why? I'd be like, uh. But it's like, that doesn't make me less sad. 100%. But, but like, it's hard because. problems are still problems. Right. You know? But I didn't want to open up to the guy whose brother basically just passed away like less than a year ago at that point. So yeah. it's like, who am I to tell him? It's like, oh, I'm sad because I won't talk to people and I won't say my feelings. It's uh -huh. like, it, like, it's just so hard, but it's not selfish. It's just talking. People it's like, have definitely expressed that to me before too. They're like, like they don't want to talk to me about their problems because they feel like their problems are n nothing compared to mine, quote unquote. And I'm just like, bro, no, like yeah. don't ever say that because at the time when I was going through it, my mindset was different. I don't know how that would have went <laughs> when I was a junior in high school. Right. But nowadays I look at it as the scale of what your worst problem is and what your best day of your life is, it's different for all of us. Like all of our best day of our life looks different and our worst day of our life looks different. But that doesn't change the fact that it was the best day of your life and the worst day of your life. Like right. my worst day and your worst day, it was both our worst days. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So like yours is still valid. Like that's the thing. So anybody watching that feels like that, maybe still today, like, because people always try to approach me with their problems and I love helping people. It's literally why I do this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, uh, please, like, if you're watching and think that, don't ever hesitate, bro. Yeah. DM the Underwater Flies on podcast. If you got problems, because I got time to help you. Like, I don't He's even care what I'm doing. not working to two anymore. Facts. And even if I was, bro, I'd be <laughs> sitting in the aisle. Yeah. I've done that many times, yeah. sitting in the aisle, bro. My manager yelling at me. I'm just like, hold up. I'm like stabbing somebody. I'm like deep, <laughs> deep advice and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, like, bro, I will sacrifice getting yelled at to help y'all. I don't even care, bro. Like, if you need something, even if it's, Something so tiny, like, oh, I broke my fingernail. Now I'm depressed. Like, I don't even. You're right. Bro, hit me up. I don't even care what your problem is. I want to help anybody. Like, But, yeah, that's just something I wanted to say because, and honestly, back then, I don't know how that would have went because I was so down bad, bro. It just, I don't even yeah. know. And not, even, <laughs> don't and even, not know. even to you, but it's like, I would allow myself to use your pain as an excuse for me not to tell anyone because it's like i could point at someone who like needs help more than me but yeah. like i hate when people are like i don't want to be a burden it does not exist as yeah, someone no. who has had that thought of me to other people i've never had that as someone coming to me like yeah. you just said i don't if, if someone could have the biggest or the smallest problem and if they come to me if they feel comfortable enough to talk to me about the issue at all i will help them regardless of what how big of an issue it is it's like if they need help They'll, they can come talk to me, whether they just need to get something off their chest. Like I'll ask people, I'll be like, do you need advice or do you just need to talk? Like, do you just need to get stuff off your chest? Do you need a back and forth? Like I can be a yes man. I can just agree or I can help solve the issue. And it's For like, sure. if, if it's an issue, if it's a something that needs to be solved, that doesn't mean I need to be the one to solve it either. It's like, you might just need to talk to me. It's like, exactly. if it's a your family issue, that's your family, not mine. It's 100%. like, especially if you don't ask me to, I'm not going to tell you my opinion about your issues. Yeah, bro. I think that most people just need somebody that will listen because here's how it goes. Oh, bro, I feel depressed. You know, this happened, this happened. They're like, oh, it's okay. I'm going through this. Like, that's the response. Right. It just makes you feel like, oh, you didn't even listen to me. Like, here's how you should, if someone's approaching you and they're depressed and going through it and you want to help them, respond by saying i feel you like i love you like you'll get like don't even say like you don't even have to say you'll get through this just being an open ear bro like let people talk that's all most people want yeah to like be it, honest. like later much later at some point in the process it's okay to open up and be like oh for sure i for had sure. a similar issue this is how i solved it i but mean when yeah, someone yeah, first yeah. comes to you yeah absolutely that's the worst thing because it that like some people probably think of it as it's like, oh, like I'm relating them to helping, which is fine. Yeah, but I that get where is you're your coming instinct. From. Like, just let whatever someone needs when they come to you, let them do whatever the reason they came to you for a reason. They didn't yeah. just on a whim. It's like they have something to get off their chest, something to tell you. It's like let whatever they have go. If you later you think it'll help to relate or whatever, great. But like, mm -hmm. someone comes to you, you got to help them. Like they're they're the they're who you need to help first. Yeah, and I don't say that at all to like make y'all feel bad or no. anything. I was this bro. I was the worst person to approach before, <laughs> like four years ago, three years, five years ago. I don't even know. A while ago, there was a point in my life 
you approach me on some depressed stuff, I would have zero clue what to do, zero clue what to say. So I'm just telling y'all this to, you know, give you some advice. I also think helping at all and listening is the biggest thing. Yeah. Like, even if you're talking about yourself, you're talking, you're yeah. talking to the person. I would rather someone, like if someone comes to someone and then be like, here's what happened to me, than them to not answer or them to not have gotten, like come to them at all. Yeah, I remember, you know how like, Okay, so there was one night whenever I was like really down bad and I sent out a snap and I've done this one time and I remember the one time and I sent it out and I was like, hey, I just need somebody to talk to y'all. Like I'm actually down. It's, it's bad right now. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I sent it to like 10 people. I don't even know who they were, but I remember like seven of them just left me on open. <laughs> and I'm just like, Dang. and it was like during the Kyle's, like the yeah. worst of it. And I'm yeah. just like, okay. That, Dang. Yeah, it was, it like it, even thinking about that, I'm like, oh, it stings. But then again, I forgive him. It was like 1 a.m., like whatever. Right. But um, yeah, literally just responding helps. Like, because some people just are so not wanting to get into it because it's, so un- it's so uncomfortable to talk about that stuff. Right. I understand where they're coming from. So yeah. I that's why I also try to reach out if I know, like there's some stuff you can't know someone's going through, but like in a scenario like yours or something like that, I always try to, even if it's not someone I'm close to, just send a text. Like yeah. if it's someone, even if they don't know me at all, I'm one more person who texts and is like, hey, I'm sorry if you need to talk to me feel free. Even if I know they'll never talk to me, it's like, we don't talk now. It's, you probably won't in the future, but it's just, it's a voice. If they didn't hear any others, I can know they heard mine. Facts. They need to talk. I know they have at least one person that offered. And Facts. so it's like, it's someone to help. Yeah, bro. And also I just want to also, I just, something I've been thinking about is sometimes people and even me, I can think of like what I've been through is such a huge deal. And like, we talk about oh, what I'm going through is nothing compared to what Foster was going through. Bro, that's the same way I think. Like, something crazy just happened this week. I'll bring it up, and I'm not going to say who or who or anything like that. But, like, I have a friend that has a friend that, and this is horrible. This literally happened the night after the new vintage thrifts. We're driving home. We heard about this. The friend of a friend, her boyfriend took her dad and brother on a plane ride. The plane crashed. This is literally, like, fresh. Like, this just happened, like, three days ago plane crashed the boyfriend dies the brother dies the dad's in critical condition i don't know i haven't heard anything so Mm -hmm. like i'm sitting here like bro how like what do you i don't even know how do you recover from that like this is the craziest thing and then all i think about in that situation is like bro we have to enjoy the present moment yeah they went on that plane i guarantee they were talking to me and like oh you're gonna have so much fun we'll see you guys and then it's like you don't know. You don't know. And yeah. I don't know. That's just really been hitting with me this week. You do not know how much time you have. You need to make the most of every moment, appreciate every moment. And like, I saw a reel the other day. It was insanely, insanely deep. It was saying, uh, it was talking about couples. It was like, boyfriends and girlfriends, remember when you're fighting, one day you will talk for the last time. Like, so today, as you're fighting, remember, yeah. this could be your last conversation. Like one day, and one day, even if it's not your last conversation, one day, 40 years from now, you will have your last conversation. That day is coming. It's going to come. So it's like, while you have time, while you're talking, while you are still here, live with love. Live with like, I, I get people get mad and stuff sometimes, but like live knowing that, hey, I'm not taking any second for granted because you never know, dude, like. And I don't even know those people that I just told that story about, but ooh, it was haunting me a little bit. I'm like, yeah. dang, bro, that is just crazy. And then that's one of the situations we've been talking a lot about how we feel like God can be, God is absent in those situations. And that was just like, man, like what what was going on? But you got to remember, you know, we're not living in heaven right now. Bad things are still going to happen, you know. But Oh, man, Dude, it was crazy. I kind of left Connor's episode think like, with a similar mindset. Cause he talked about that. He's like, he's like, yeah. I've had cancer since I was whatever years old and I'm still here, but I, it was never guaranteed. It's like, yeah, it isn't for anyone, but he had a diagnosis that told him that and it changed the way he lived life. Yeah. And it obviously should change the way he does, but uh-huh. technically we all could. It's like, and just him talking about it is like, he's actually been able to do that. And he's made so many memories and a lot more than I have and different ones than I have part of it because of that so it's like yeah it's not a blessing i'm so okay not having cancer yeah but like it just something like hearing him talk about that has changed my perspective in 100%. The, however long since i watched that episode. he seems like you like hold up that pole 
Wait. Do I hear Brad? <laughs> I do. He seems like he is just like taking his situation and really made the most out of it. So yeah. I'm really proud of that kid. I'm really proud of my brother too. You know, we've been through some stuff and I hope that I could someday say that person that just lost all those people, hopefully someday she can find a way. Right. Oh man, I just that's so <laughs> Yeah, tough. that is super unfortunate. Yeah, like but- I don't even know how to explain that situation. It's yeah. crazy. Talking about like you and Carson, it's like there was a time and it wasn't a short time where both of you were like, what's the point? It's like, yeah, you were just kind of going through emotions and just living life to live life. Like you guys, you guys were both young. It's like, we're, we're talking about how young we are now. And that was six years ago. And it's like, Carson was like 14. Right. It's like, you guys were literal kids and it, but now it, you're both thriving. You're both doing great. Yeah. And again, it's just like you made the most out of a super, an extremely unfortunate situation. Like mm-hmm. we would all rather that just not happen, but with ha- with it happening, it's like you made the most out of it, and you you turned. It's like you talk about you're not living life for Kyle. It's like you're living life with Kyle now, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like you're living life not to do it for him, but just so he can see it happen, like see you thrive. And it's you're not forgetting Kyle. It's just kind of changing the way because you guys both talked about that yeah. on, on the episode as well, which I thought was super cool. Did you end up watching all the whole episode too? I think so. Did you hear my story about the note that I got from one of my students? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then I won't, was, go, yeah. I won't go back into it. I was just seeing. Yeah, that was super cool. That was a big, that was a big moment yeah. in my life. Like, I can't believe it was such a big moment in my life, but it is, it really <laughs> is. I mean, it's that little stuff. I feel like yeah. that's part of the reason it's like, I'm trying not to get so caught up in planning because it's like, if I think about the highlights of my life, it's not stuff that was planned at least that much. It's, and if it was planned, it was planned a few days before, a week before, or whatever. It's not stuff yeah. that I've turmoiled over. It's like those long-term stuff, if anything, have, hasn't paid out because I've put too high expectations on it. It's like uh-huh. this episode, we had nothing coming in now we're and now we're minutes. almost an hour in. And yeah. it's like, I told you two things we were going to talk about. We <laughs> technically covered one not because you asked about it. We just kind of got there. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember what the other one was, but there's no shot we covered it. And like, uh-huh. I had a great time. And it's, that's just kind of how I, I want to start living life more. Cause I like so much of my life, I, I hate being late to stuff. Like I, I really plan. Cause I, if there's one thing I will never be as late. Like I will always yeah. be somewhere on time, but that doesn't need to be everywhere else. Like I can be on time, but I don't need to over plan every single part of my life. And I'm yeah. trying to get a lot better at that. For sure. So, I mean, we are pretty deep into this episode, but I, I want to go for an hour, bro. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm here for whenever. I got nothing else to do. Oh, well, there we go. Well, first of all, I feel like you're, I feel like you'll be great with the, with the guest on. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's cool too. Cause like you've always had to be in my position, the yeah. host and you could channel that same energy as a co-host, bro. That would, that would be nuts. Cause here's the thing. Like, so, so, so say I'm selling shirts, really cool design, but there's only 10 of them. That value out the roof because it's like, bro, that's fire, but there's only 10 of them. Okay. We got to get it quick. Probably could sell those for like 80 bucks and they would sell like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like that's a, that's a big deal. That's kind of how our words are, bro. The less words you say, the bigger deal your words become. So that, I think I've always thought I would thrive in a co-host role. Maybe you could be the host sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, I just think that, um, I think you'll thrive in that role. I think that's one thing I've gotten better at as I've gotten older is like, I'm a good speaker. I'm comfortable talking. I was not always a good listener or comfortable listening. It's like, I don't like dead silence. I yeah. Di- I didn't like the conversation not revolving around what I wanted to talk about. But yeah. like, being a good listener, I think is harder and more important than a good speaker. It's like, oh, for sure. I can just say some words. I can think of words. I can rattle them off. I could talk for the next 10 minutes out taking a breath. Yeah. doesn't matter. It's like listening is where you get to know people. And I think that's made me a better person, better friend is when I've learned to like listen and remember. It's like, I'm not listening for you to be done for me to say what I'm thinking. I'm listening to listen and bounce off what you said. Like there's been a yeah. couple times I've had a thought. I'm like, I can add this on. Then you start talking and I forget the thought. And that's fine. Like bro, that, that's how I am every episode. Absolutely bro. fine. Like that's what listening is. It's like a conversation building, not like us just going back and forth. Yeah. It's like, we're listening with our eyes closed. It's like, okay, he's done. And now it's my turn. Blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. And he's talking again. Okay. And you shut off. So you don't forget. And it's like, that's not what listening is. That's not what good listening is. hundred percent. And I feel like that's part of the reason I love how the podcast is now. Cause, and that's one of the biggest growing things I've learned is cause literally when I did the, I told the new vintage thrift guys, this, I was like, when we met and we did our first episode, I, when I watched it back, I was like, dang, they were talking about that. Cause I wasn't even listening. Yeah. I was just like ready trying to pick up things and be like, all right, bet next question. Like, right. and I'm not, a, I'm in no way trained to do any of this. I'm no way <laughs> trained to do an interview, no way trained to do 
a podcast in general. So like, it was tough for me. That was one of my first true interviews where I literally didn't know the people at all, never met them before. And they came in and we did it. That was, I think that was the first one that was like that. So it was tough for me. Right. So I give myself a little bit of grace, but at the same time, I'm like, man, that's something that I'm glad I've improved on because it's made the episode so much more like real and I'm at, like in that episode I did with them, it was an hour, 20 minutes, no planned questions. There was not, not one question I asked was planned. Right. It was me sitting back thinking, what do I genuinely want to ask them because of what they just said? Not yeah. let me try to grab something and formulate a question. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. so much more chill. I, I've this had this one example though. I've had this conversation with our buddy, uh, our friend Drew that we both yeah. know. I think it is way harder to listen and to have a conversation in a one-on-one. Cause it's like you talk, I have to listen to what you say have it and then as uh-huh. soon as you're done it's like oh it's my turn to talk like there's no exactly. one else yeah in a group of four it's like i can listen i can listen i can listen i can listen exactly. for 10 minutes and then have what i want to say exactly or you can talk like you have the option but one-on-one it's like you had to talk you had to talk about that interview and like you weren't listening but you you had hour 20 minutes and i had to listen to that and immediately like i have to answer it's like uh-huh. i had a little tidbit and it's just it's a lot harder one-on-one so yeah. it's like being able to go in a group is I, is, sure. is definitely easier. I think it's a better, like if someone wants to get better at listening, do it in a group. Do yeah. one-on-one is so much harder. All right. I'm going to switch the battery before that thing dies and then we'll just uh, see where this goes. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's up, y'all? We back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we were talking about, but I want you to remember the second thing you wanted to talk about. Can you even do that? I don't think I had a second thing. I thought you said you came in with two things. Oh yeah. I don't remember what it was. We talked yesterday. I just remember we were like, okay. I was like, here's two things I want to talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I have no clue. And I think that's, that is kind of like the beauty of what this was is like, yeah, we, we were like, let's not plan that much, but I have a couple ideas I've thought about. And we came in here, never directly asked about the one I like, I was like, this is the whole podcast idea. Uh-huh. And, and then you were like, yeah, I was like, well, maybe not. Okay. I guess we don't have to do the whole thing about that. Yeah. And then I was like, also we could do the second thing. And you're like, yeah, okay. Don't know what it is probably won't ever remember and we're an hour in and we're an hour in and i don't really care and it's like oh like we were just talking about a second ago it was like when i was switching the battery i'm like i forgot we were even recording <laughs> yeah yeah and i think it's, it's also just the it helps that we've been friends for 15 Facts. years or whatever it is Big it's Facts. like one time i was here and it was like 10 30 oh, 11 no, I know what you're about to and say. it was me you your brother your mom and maybe like jack or something like that jack fields it was oh, like bro, one other person we got to get him on soon and all of a sudden it was 3 a.m and it's like <laughs> And it was fine. Like we didn't have anywhere to go. It's like, I didn't look at the time because I didn't have to. And it was just, it was just easy to talk. And, and then, I mean, that, it's kind of like the group setting thing, but it was just like, we just reminisced yeah. about, about life. Yeah. I mean, it's been, our, our friendship's crazy just because like, we're such good friends, but then like for the last couple of years, I've not seen you much yeah. because of college and stuff, but like nothing changed. I, right. mean. <laughs> I think that's one thing. That's another thing I really appreciate about you is you're one of those people. Like I've got a few friends that it's like, no matter how long or how short it's been since I've seen them, it's like nothing's going to change nothing, if we don't want yeah. it to. Like if we don't have genuine beef or anything, it's like you're not going to blame – like us being at college however many hours away, like you're not going to make a detriment to our friendship. And that's not yeah. a given with people, which is like it's fine. That is a long way and that isn't – but it's like you didn't let that affect us. It's like we left or whatever. Uh-huh. It's like we went through a gap in like just before high school, before tennis, and then and then during college where it's like – they don't see each other often, but it didn't really matter. Exactly. And like, even if we did have genuine beef, it, I don't think we I, would I, get I, over I it. I have no clue. I have never had like genuine beef with a person. Yeah. I, I don't know what me angry looks like. I talked about this with okay. my fiance of over six years. I don't think I've ever been angry. I've been irritated. I've been yeah. annoyed. I've never been actually angry. The day someone makes me angry, I, I don't know what it's going to look like because it would take a lot. Yeah, people people have been very annoying and very mean yeah. to me, and it's like, and I don't get angry. Uh huh. I'll like I'll get assertive or whatever. Like I I try not to let people walk all over me, but I don't I don't see the point in anger. Like I don't use I don't hate people. I don't see that. Like, yeah. I don't like people. Like I dislike people. I'll stay away. From, but it's like hate feels strong. Anger uh-huh. feels like that's just not something that I feel. I kind of agree. I mean, especially since I've really been starting to find God more. I'm just like, bro. I don't even, like, yeah. I don't even think I care enough about right. most things. Like, and I get what's deep. Like someday I, I'm going to have kids. If some dude comes over disrespecting Macy or like right. my kids or something, I'm going to be like, all right. But even then, I don't think I'd be, I mean, I'd be mad, but I wouldn't be like, all right, boy, I'm playing. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right, I'd be like, right. hey, chill, get back. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, yeah. I don't, I don't think I've really, when have I been angry? 
Mm. I think the only three people, it's my McKenna, my sister, and my mom. It's like if someone like put their hands on them. Like that's yeah. the, that's the only thing right now. It's like if someone comes up and like physically accosts them or like yeah. says some mean stuff. And it's like, and then it's like, I'd get angry and then I'd probably get over it. Like I'd sucker punch the dude. And I'd yeah. stop. one time I told my, I was with my sister or my parents and my sister. And I said that my dad was like, what? Nothing about me. I was like, dad, if someone is beating you up, what am I going to do? <laughs> my dad is an inch yeah. taller, 30 pounds heavier. He is strong. Like if he's getting beat up, if you're getting you ain't going to be much help. I'm like, sure. If you want me to get knocked out next to you, sure. Dad, <laughs> yeah. I'll step up. If you want us to be laying in a heap together. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll help defend you. But like, I'm not doing anything there, but it's whereas the like the females that are smaller it's like it is my job and my dad's for my mom and sister to protect them and so it's yeah like, for sure that's what i was supposed to do i agree i agree for sure yeah i don't i can't think of you angry i can barely I, think of you as annoyed uh, and when it is it's like sports when it is it's like back in the wiffle ball days yeah well, i mean back in the, we still be doing the, the, early, wiffle, ball the days. early wiffle ball yeah yeah it was honestly i think when i became president of sig hip a lot of things changed for me. Yeah. Like, do you remember I'd get kind of stressed about wiffle ball related stuff? Yeah. Bro, that stuff is like in the back, like not even in my head. Like it's just natural now. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, I remember October 2023 was the month I called my mom. I was like, mom, if I make it through this month alive, I will be a changed man forever. Because <laughs> I was up for homecoming. So I had homecoming king meetings, president meetings. That's like, y'all don't understand. It's like three to five pointless meetings a day i mean talking <laughs> the biggest waste of time meetings a day yeah. and then you know school i was preparing for student teaching i had student, just okay i had so much crap i don't right. want to get into all of it i can't even remember all of it um and after that i was just like oh i gotta work five to two i got a podcast episode i gotta make this vlog and edit this and do this okay cool let's get it like <laughs> yeah. no no worries because it's just like i was literally <laughs> dealing with so much crap i'm just I, I just really chilled me out. I'm just like, I'm good. Every year of the last like four years of my life, starting like junior, senior year, I've been like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. And I like, I don't know how I could do more. And I always end up doing more. Exactly. Every, every six months, every semester, whatever. It's like, I take on more responsibility than I, than I let go of. And it's like three years, three years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. Now I have gotten exponentially more busy every semester. Yeah. And I keep thinking like, oh, this is the most I can do. And then I do a little bit more. And it's like, even if it's new, there's just always something. And it's, yeah. And so looking back, I'm like, oh man, I wish I could be there. But in three years, I'm going to be looking back now working. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I could be in college. That's but like, exactly what I'd be thinking about, bro. I, I, my, my dad kind of shot me down when I was like, I can't, I'm excited to work. Like I'm excited to be out of college. Uh -huh. I think part of it is the last three years, I have put more time into like things than a 40 hour work week will. And yeah, some of it isn't stuff that I want to do. It's stuff I know needs to be done or I should do. But it's like in six months, I get the freedom to choose what I want for the other however many hours that I'm opening up. It's yeah. like, yeah, it, it's work. And I know it's not supposed to be fun. And now there's more bills and there's life. I got to plan a wedding and like how and all this stuff. But it's like that stuff that's interesting to me. And it's yeah. right now I'm doing some stuff that honestly isn't that exciting to me. And so I'm kind of trying to transition. But it's like I'm so excited. My dad was like, man, talk to me in a year or whatever. See if you still are. I was like all right, let me be optimistic now. It's July, dad. Let me be happy. Yeah, but well, he's, he's just a realistic dude. I'm just sitting here thinking that's exactly how I feel. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly. Right. Like when I left Walmart today, I was like, life's about to get easy because what do I got coming up? I got a month to grind on the podcast. Then I start teaching elementary school PE. <laughs> <laughs> is it gonna is it gonna stress me out to the point where i get home and i can't even record a pop but no yeah. i'm telling you right now i refuse to let it stress playing me dodgeball out. for seven and a half hours a day okay 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 let's not get crazy <laughs> i'm gonna really be teaching these yeah, kids you did tell I'm me gonna, that. um yeah. but yeah i'm gonna be teaching these kids so i'm gonna teach them the bones and right. stuff these are gonna be the smartest elementary kids ever <laughs> but but when i'm out of work i'm chilling bro it's not like i just had to sit through some stupid meeting about some Stuff that I won't even get into because I'm not even trying to get into it. Right. I'm not having to deal with this, the, the, all this BS, bro. Cops showing up to the house. You know that where this right. dude's at? Like right. just stupid stuff. Like I'm going to be dealing with, okay, my passion's to make an impact. I get to make an impact all day through physical education. Right. Then I get to come home at a reasonable time, every day, set <laughs> schedule. Like, bro, I'm right. excited for it. And yeah. yeah, I get it's going to be, there's going to be new stresses. There always is. But like I said, going back to October, 2023, bring it bro yeah. bring it like come on life bring it i'm well, ready i also think that set schedule you're talking about is huge for me it's like right huge. like like right now it's like yeah i got all the stuff to do 
I can choose when to do some of it. Some of the, like nothing, there's only so many consistent scheduled things throughout the week. Yeah. So not only am I probably more busy than a 40 hour work week, my time spent like waiting or figuring out, like adds so much. It's oh, like yeah. so much time trying to figure out when stuff is like I got classes Tuesday, Thursday, everything else is kind of up in the air like or uh-huh. whatever it is. And so it's like at work, it's like I get up at seven, I go to work eight to whatever I come home and then I have the evening and it's like, For that sure. is my schedule. And some people, I think it's monotonous. Like it used to scare me. It's like, I used to not want an office job and stuff. And now yeah. it's like, okay, not having a cubicle, but I'm not against it. Like yeah. a set schedule where like I can get up and still interact and stuff. It's, it's exciting because it's not what I've had. Uh-huh. But then in 20 years, I'm going to look back and be like, oh, I wish I had the flexibility, yada, yada. It's, yeah. You always it, want what you don't have. So 100%. I, I try not to dwell on it, but it is going to be nice. Yeah. That's one thing I think back to college too. I was always ready to graduate. Like from sophomore year, I was like, all right, let's get out of here. That's when I started the podcast, basically. Yeah. I was like, I need time. I need time to do this. Right. And I did not have that in college. And now I look back and I watch like my college vlogs and stuff and I'm like, Man, those were some good times, yeah. and I spent it ready to get out of there. Like, what? That's that's my biggest problem in my life right now that I need to figure out, and that's the same thing at Walmart, bro. That was the set schedule, 5 a.m. to 2, but that's a that's a bad set schedule, <laughs> That's bro. not great. I didn't even go set schedule right there, <laughs> 5 a.m. to 2. That, but the thing is, like, I loved working there. It was so fun. Like, literally, I met so many cool people, so many – like, there was a reason I was there. I don't know what it was, like, but it was good. It was fulfilling to me to be there. That being said, I spent the whole time, can't wait till I get out. I'm like, why do I keep being in a season, can't wait to get out of it, and then I get out of it, and I look back at it, and I'm like, dang, I'm going to miss that. Like, right. I just need to be more present, bro. That is my biggest issue. I need to work through it. I need to figure out yeah. how to work through it. Yeah. I mean, there's a difference between, like, I have a good time when I'm having a good time. It's like, you had yeah. a good time at Walmart, yeah, but you didn't enjoy it like you can. So it's, yeah, like, that's true. it's like, I still, like, I like the moment. I enjoy the moment. I appreciate it in the moment, but I don't do it to what it like deserves. And I think you kind of have the same thing. It's, yeah. it's not like you, you obviously, you said you had a good time, but it's, you could have had a better time. You could have consciously enjoyed it more. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like a lion in the zoo, right? A lion was born in the zoo, never experienced the wild, but it has this fuel and this desire to be free by nature. It's a lion, you know, it has the desire mm-hmm. to roam wherever lions live type <laughs> stuff, but, but it's born into a zoo. That desire still exists and it's, probably going to have some fun in its little area in the zoo, but you got to keep the cages up or that dude's going to run away because it has that desire to explore and be free. That's how I feel like I am at times. Like, yeah, I have fun in the cage, (laughs) but I'm trying to break out the cage. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I was thinking too, I was like, is, is, is teaching going to be breaking out the cage? Will I feel free doing that? And I guess we'll find out. But Mm. what I keep telling myself is no matter what, whether I love it or I hate it or whatever happens, enjoy it every day. Enjoy it because whether I teach for one year or 30 years, next year, today, like this day, every day, next year, I want to make sure I enjoy. Because I mean, you will be teaching stuff. for a year. At oh, least. 100%. You the so you got to make the you, most of right, it. Right, you put pen to paper. It's like it's you're going to be there. Yeah. Like you said, we're young. If you decide you don't want to do it, that's fine. But yeah. you're doing it. Don't make yourself miserable. Exactly. You, don't, I cannot allow myself yeah. to be the way I've been in college and at Walmart just yeah. thinking, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. And Because in high school, I was never like that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I just got really motivated about life and then I wanted to do more and more and more. But yeah. sometimes you just got to realize like, yeah, you want so much, but don't let everything you want distract you from everything that you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was definitely, you're right. In high school, I didn't want to leave. No, I, I, like, I had a good time. COVID, especially now looking back, Ooh, like it so was tough because my last, I graduated 2020. So yeah, those last three tough. months was weird. But it, so tough. it's like, I, I probably would have March, April, May wanted to get out of there. But it's like, yeah, I don't know when it started, but now it's like I can't wait to get to my next stage of life, and that's not the way to do stuff. It's like uh-huh. if you're looking to the next stage, how do you know you're in the good old times if 100%. you're not in it? But it's like yeah. it's, it's going back to the Andy Bernard quote from The Office. So it's like yeah. right now might be the best part of my life. Like I everything may fall apart for me in six months, but I don't know that now, and I'm looking forward to it when this could be the best part of my life. You cannot even see a, six months from now. Right. Some crazy stuff could happen. Yeah. Not, let's pray it don't, but right. like – you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm and I'm trying to fly past it when it, when it should have been my prime and my most enjoyed part. Yeah, yeah, that's so that just hit me right there. <laughs> that just hit me right there. Like right. thinking ahead, like, oh man, I got this year ahead. Who's to say? Right. Who's to say you I might, got that year ahead? You know. Yeah, you got the day you woke up for, and it's like exactly you got this moment. Enjoy it. 
dude, that's hitting me. That's hitting <laughs> me for sure. And I, th- it's something that I think about all the time. Like I really do be packing my days full right. as I talked about this week. This is my off week. This is my week of chilling because you just got surgery. I did not, but like, you know what I'm saying? I, that's something I always do, but I just, uh, yeah, you really got to be in the moment, bro. You really got to be present in the moment because you don't know how many more moments you got. And right. like, you know, like we said, God willing, we're going to be here till we're 85, but that's not a guarantee in this yeah. world. So interesting stuff, dude. Mm. Interesting yeah. stuff. And then even that story, like that I told a little bit ago, that's been hitting me all week too. Right. bro. Mm. That is just, yeah, you really got to appreciate the moment. You really got to appreciate the moment. I'm excited for this next month, bro. I'm going to have a month to really grind on this. Like, yeah. I don't have any more responsibilities. I got some other stuff coming up. Oh, should I say it or should I not? No, I shouldn't. Like June 21st to Eldorado, the live podcast. Yeah, that, that's coming up. Yeah, that's up. coming up. Do you know what? Okay, so I'll get into this. Ju- uh, June, July 21st, by the way. July 21st, I, Did sorry. you see on my story I put... Never mind. No, I put June 21st on my story. I did the same. I'm stupid. Yeah. I had to exit. I was thinking June 9th, June, July 21st. So June yeah, 9th yeah. happens, right? June 9th happens. Big event. Best, one of the best nights of my entire life, straight up. And then the next weeks that have been following, I'm just like, bro, I just want to do something big again. But like, uh, is it going to happen? Is God going to allow it to happen? Yeah. And he did, bro. Like, it's going to happen. I can, I'm so psyched. I'm yeah. so psyched. I'm excited for it too. Yeah. It'll be really be dope. Lit. It's going to be lit. That's coming up. Big stuff is coming up. We're going to... I want to do an episode on the boat if I could figure out the <laughs> technicality. Up, right. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to do some big stuff in this month. So, yeah, this could be the best month of my life. You just got to make it that, you know? Right. Yeah, you could look back at this moment. You just got to enjoy it as it happens. Yeah. If it ends up being the best, it does. If not, exactly. you had a good time during it, at least. Yeah, that's something I've always preached, but I don't know. I've, I feel like I get, I've gotten so busy that, like, a lot of the foundational beliefs and, like, motivations that I have, I've kind of just been in a numb state of grind you know what i'm saying and it's nice to think back and relearn and do stuff like that i think part of it is building those into like muscle memory like when you get into those zones it's like it's not it should be foundational beliefs because you think it should be that just should be so it's like once you get into that zone it's like that's the biggest thing for me it's like i can tell myself now enjoy my last semester at college but if I don't truly believe it, when I get busy, I'm going to forget about it. And so it's like, I got to make it part of me, not just like, oh, what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that that's true. So like, sometimes I think if I had this podcast when I was a senior in high school, freshman in college, do you remember when I'd post all that motivational stuff? Yeah. I had it on deck, bro. Like it was going, <laughs> yeah. like I was so motivated, so good at thinking of stuff. And now I'm just like, what am I going to talk about? I'm sure something will come out of me that's motivating but right. like back then it was just ready to go but now all that stuff is just built into my brain i don't even can't even remember some of it i know it's just a part of me now but it's hard to preach on it like one thing one example i have is like the message of be yourself at all times no matter what like be you don't let anybody's judgment get to you because at the end of the day if you're not being yourself you're not going to be loved for who you truly are like you got to be yourself to find people that love you for who you truly are like it's common sense stuff but it's something that when I learned that, when I really started living that, I was like, this is crazy. Be yourself. And then I started getting all these friends that I felt like really loved me for me. And it was those sig up dudes, bro. They started embracing me being like, oh, bro, it's so cool that you don't drink. It's so cool. Like, we love that. And I'm like, dude, I was always afraid to show who right. I was. And these dudes are embracing me for being myself. So those doors were opening and it was crazy. I, like, I wish back then I could have had the podcast and preached on that. Because now it's just like, well, duh, be your... Like, that's just, like, yeah. duh. Like, it's just a part of, like, the foundation of my lifestyle. I got my but piece of advice for the podcast. Let's get it. This is for the people. This is for the Instagram reel. You were talking <laughs> about you you don't, you don't can't put the motivational stuff to paper because it's just who you are. Yeah. If there is one thing that you guys are going to do, it is Foster's actions, not his... Well, listen to his words. But Foster, yeah. that motivational stuff, it doesn't come out in words because it comes out in your actions. You okay. don't tell people to be yourself. You just are yourself. And it's, like that kind of thing. It's like, you do what you believe. You don't say what you believe. It's easy. I always told myself, be yourself, but I wasn't. You you say be yourself and you are yourself. So I think it's like, don't, don't just listen to Foster, watch Foster, see who he is. It's like, he wanted to make a podcast. We are in a podcast. We have a dope setup. He wanted a (laughs) vlog. He makes vlogs. He wanted merch. He got merch. It's like what Foster wants to do. He does what Foster believes in. He shows. And it's like, be like, watching foster is just amazing i've talked about like wishing i hopped on the podcast earlier because i've just been able to watch foster grow 
as a person, learn himself and do what he believes in. And it's, it's what like, partly what I always want to do. It's like, it's easy for me to say all this stuff I've said today. A lot of the stuff I say I want to do, it's like, I'm trying to do, I don't actually do. A lot of the yeah. stuff I feel like you've said, you do. You believe in yourself. You actively invite people to DM the account if you don't know them. It's like, you don't just say it. You believe it and you do it. And it's it's super cool to watch. So be like this guy. Dude, stop it, bro. Stop it. You're making me <laughs> emotional over here. Dang, bro. Wait, can we get some? <laughs> Dang, bro. And a little bit of... Uh. <laughs> Why is it so long? That's, so that's, that's crazy. Let's just keep going. Do I hear Brad? <laughs> I did not Bro. think that's what that button was. I hit the wrong one. That's <laughs> that's my way of escaping everything you just said, so I don't cry. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I do. I hate taking compliments. I love giving them. I'm oh, a big I words of affirmation guy. How do you do it? You just go, okay, thank you. No, there's no good. I don't no. know how to do it. But I love get. I I'm a big. I tell people how I feel because yeah. it's like I don't know that like if the way I show it doesn't show. But like my dad. He does actions. It's like uh -huh. my dad won't tell me. Well, he does tell me he loves me, but he won't. <laughs> he's not gonna voice how he feels. He'll yeah. just check my oil and my tires before I go on a three-hour road trip back to Wichita. It's like that's, that's how he shows his exactly. love. I'm huge on words. I will. Always, yeah. I always. I always try to tell people how, like, how I feel. Dude, that just meant a lot to me though, because like, that's something that I've hoped people understood. Like, especially people like you that I love and like are my best friends. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that you did notice, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, um, oh, I try to be a motivation with the way I live and I try to show it to the world. And then I'm like, do they receive or are they just like, oh, here's this dude again, posting another podcast reel on his snap. You know, like we talked about earlier and it's right. just like, oh man, the fact that you did notice it. Right. And I hope you ain't the only one, bro. I, I hope, I hope people listening are like facts. That dude's speaking facts. Right? Yeah. You know and it's saying? like, cause it's like, I see you spamming your story. Not as a way to annoy people. It's like, you have a passion you have put it out there. You want people to see your passion. It's like, yeah. you want to spread. It's like, so you have a good intention. And so I think your actions almost have shown what, how you feel more than your words have in a lot of, in a lot of cases. Uh -huh. It's like, you feel like you, like you don't know how to word it or it's like, oh, I need to get better at this, but you're already amazing at it. It's like, you do it well. I feel like your actions represent you so well, which is the opposite. Like it's way easier to say how you want to act. You just do it. You just act how you want to act. You do what you want to yeah. do. I appreciate that a lot, bro. Yeah. That's another one of those foundational, motivational things that I had. It was really my sophomore year of college. I feel like when I really was coming up on like building my foundation of how I want to live my life and stuff, that's one of those motivational things that I put on my story one time. It said actions, then this thing, yeah. like greater than was, words. You know what I'm saying? That was like, that was it. And I had a ton of people, facts, bro, facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Swiping up. And back then it was like, that's so true. You know, actions mean everything. You could talk all this big talk, but if, your actions don't follow, then you're just talking. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of those foundational things that I implemented in my life. And I've really been trying to, really been trying to focus on it. And then, ooh, thank you, bro. Thank you for that. It's that was awesome. special. That was one of my favorite moments of Underwater Flies on History. I'm not even kidding. Sick. Yeah, you already know. What is she doing? Like, what is she doing, bro? <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can outdo episode five or four, whichever one it was. Mm, will I post this and say <laughs> it is? What, probably will. <laughs> I probably I'll you, will. I'll, I'll, let probably you will. I'll let you edit and marinate. See if it's your favorite. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. I'll record an episode and I'll be like, it was good. Editing, I'm like, bro, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh my God, not to full circle. It's hard to see it in the moment. It's yeah, like, it is. It's, it's different from enjoying it in the moment, but it's like, you're focused on doing it, not like enjoying it and marinating it. Uh -huh. So it's like, sometimes in the moment you can enjoy it because you have to do it. So it's like right now, you have to be thinking of what to say. Like we have to have a conversation. Yeah. You, have to, you can just be a bystander of your own, Facts. For your own podcast. Facts. Dang, bro. I hope people still watching. Uh, yeah, definitely not. That, yeah, probably not. <laughs> no, but I, my parents are still here. Let's do, let's, let's do a little thing. All right. If you're still watching and you leave a comment, oh, I can't be giving away shirts though. I'm broke. <laughs> I just want to know if people are here. I want to just out of respect, because this is going to take, hours to edit actually this one will be chill because it's a one camera angle it'll take 30 minutes comment respect yeah comment <laughs> respect y'all because if i could take the time to make it and edit it and all that just take the time to leave a comment yeah please that's yeah. a big thing i i need to say that at the beginning of, a, of an episode just like because comments mean so much bro like yeah first of all boost the algorithm <laughs> people don't understand <laughs> right like, when you comments are huge yeah comments are huge second of all it shows me like oh not only do i have 50 views there was actually people that 
actually listened and actually took something from it. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, we could talk all day. We could talk all night. But do you want to end this, bro? Yeah, I'm sure I'll be back. I can I can think of some more words to say next time I'm on here. Okay, but okay, but oh, well, let's do it then. I love you guys. Thanks for awesome watching, y'all. Uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are on the journey to 1,000 subscribers. We can't get there unless y'all hit that freaking subscribe button. So please do that. And uh, like I, like we said, leave a comment. If you do leave a comment, say that you made it to the end of the episode. And also say your favorite moment from the episode. All right? Um, leave a like. Share it. Follow us on Instagram. Um, oh, I actually did forget something. <laughs> The new merch drop's coming in, y'all. And uh, if you go to the event on Friday, you'll get early access. Once we sell out, we sell out. So you should probably go to the event in the off chance that we don't sell out, which we probably won't. Check the website. It'll be dropping within the next week. So new merch drop coming. It's literally the same logo as the last one, but different colorway. So yeah. All right. I love you guys. Like I said, we'll talk all day if we don't end this. So we're going to end this. I appreciate you having me. Yes, sir. Hey, appreciate you coming on, bro. Peace out.